We are back on the couch today. We are on the couch. New studio setup on the couch. Getting nice and cozy for Halloween. Pretty cool, right? Comfy as fuck. All right. Game one of the World Series was last night. Exciting stuff. Best day of the year. World Series started. If you guys watch the game, look how good the Braves are, okay? Braves have faced these pitchers in the postseason. Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Freddie Peralta, Max Scherzer, Walker Bueller, Julio Urias. They faced all those all those pitchers. And they came out on top in every series. Braves offense, watch out. They can take on the best starting pitching, relief pitching in the bigs. Not fucking around. How about last night? Charlie Morton out for the rest of the World Series. Very sad. Charlie Morton was hit by a ball from Yuli Gurriel in the second inning. It fractured his right fibula. The dude finished the inning and then came out for the next inning and still got an out. That's tough. I mean, you talk about hockey guys or rug. I mean, dude is pitching on a fractured leg, pitching, and then he struck out Jose Altuve. That's tough. So, Charlie Morton, warrior, friggin' awesome. Like I said, his last pitch was a spinning curveball to Jose Altuve for a called third strike with a fractured leg. Dude is tough. Max Freed is going tonight. Then Ian Anderson, and then Game 4 is unknown right now. Uh, Even before Morton's injury, still wasn't going to be sure who was going to start Game 4. A.J. Minter came in for Charlie Morton yesterday, threw a career-high 43 pitches, and was nice, dude. He is just a, looks like a big old country boy, got that mullet, that nice side skin with short, and then the long, flowy mullet. Dude has got some lettuce, looking real good. Career-high 43 pitches, and pitched masterfully. Well done to him. So, Charlie Morton done for the year, right? Braves stinks, right? I mean, you lost one of your aces. Wrong! Braves have overcome adversity all year long. Let's take a look. When you talk about teams of dynasty and things like that, how can you not... I mean, the best... A team that can overcome that much adversity is sometimes just a team of destiny. So, let's look at their adversity. The Braves... Remember Ronald Acuna Jr. went down for the year in July. Marcelo Zuna decided to beat up his wife or girlfriend. Don't remember. So he lost two outfielders. Ronald Acuna Jr., possible MVP. Marcelo Zuna, awesome outfielder, great offense. One to an injury, one to domestic uh, abuse scandal. The Braves couldn't replace them. Right? So they couldn't replace Ronald Acuna Jr. You're not going to just replace him. But what they did do was they recreated him in the aggregate. This is where the money ball stuff comes into place, right? We can't get a new, another Ronald Acuna Jr., but we can recreate him. How did they recreate him? They got Adam Duvall, Jorge Soler, Eddie Rosario, and Jock Peterson. Those four outfielders helped recreate... Ronald Acuna Jr. and Marcelo Zuna. Those two big outfielders that you lost, they pick up four. Duval, Soler, Rosario, and Peterson. How well have they been performing? Let's take a look. Soler, last night, leadoff home run off the third pitch of the game. First swing, gone. Good pickup, Jorge Soler, former Cub. First player to homer in his first plate appearance in any World Series. No player has ever hit a home run in their first appearance of the World Series. Adam Duvall hits a two-run bomb as well in the third inning. Puts his team up 5 nothing. So there's the other one, Duvall and Soler, creating all the offense so far. Eddie Rosario, 11-game hit streak in the postseason. Consistency. 
My goodness. So you got your power and you got your on base percentage and your average that you were missing with Acuna and Ozuna gone. So you're recreating that with other players. It's amazing. So Rosario's got that 11 game hit streak in the postseason, third longest in Braves history. Um, all four of these acquisitions have made up for nine of the 14 home runs this postseason. Those pickups are, are launching bombs. Braves have had 14 home runs this postseason. Nine of them have been from these four additions that they got in the middle of the season. Brilliant. This team is, has, is a different team than at the beginning of the season. Guess what? Everyone gets a taco. It's Taco Tuesday. Ozzy Albies stole second in the first inning, giving everybody a free Doritos Locos Tacos on November 4th. So make sure you go to your participating Taco Bell to pick up your free Doritos Locos Tacos. And make sure you thank Ozzy Albies for stealing second base in the first inning. Thank you, Ozzy. I will definitely be celebrating with a free taco. Now let's look at the Braves' bullpen, Okay. Morton left in the third inning yesterday, right? A.J. Minter had to come in. They had to piece together a bullpen game. Braves' bullpen, they've been asked a lot so far this postseason. They've been asked of, of a lot. Braves' bullpen has accounted for 49.4%, almost 50% of the team innings in the NLDS and the NLCS. This whole postseason, almost 50% of the innings have come from the bullpen. What does that mean? Max Freed needs to have a long start today. They had to go to the bullpen in the third inning because that freak accident with uh, Charlie Morton. So Max Freed has to deal tonight. And even if he doesn't deal, he's got to put in six innings, seven innings because they had to turn to the bullpen so early. So he cannot afford to have a shitty outing. It's a necessity. Can't tax the bullpen this much this early. So let's see what Max Freed's got in store for us tonight. <clears throat> Since 1995, teams who have take, taken a 1-0 lead have won the World Series 81% of the time. Since 95, teams who took a 1-0 lead have won the World Series 81% of the time. I mean, that's a lot. That's a big percentage. I, I, I don't know. That is, um, that's a huge percentage. Let's look at Valdez yesterday. This is why Valdez ran into trouble. Five of his eight hits that he allowed from behind in the count. That Jorge Soler home run, 0-2. Uh, Duvall was behind as well. So five of the eight hits he gave up, he was behind in the count. If you get behind in counts, you're going to run into situations where the other team is going to do damage. So... That's where Valdez um, got into trouble yesterday. He fell behind in the count. And then he has, you know, can't locate. And he puts another team in situations to do damage. Great game last night, right? Let's look at game two tonight. We got Max Freed, MLB best, 1.74 ERA after the All-Star break. Max Freed dealt, man. He has been awesome. Just two runs through his first 12 innings this postseason. Immaculate. Two runs in his first 12 innings in the postseason. He's making his first career World Series start tonight. And who's he going up against? Jose, Jose Urquidy. I always want to say Urquidy. Urquidy making his second World Series start. When was his first? His first was in 2019, where he threw five scoreless innings in Game 4 against the Nationals. So he had a great outing, his last World Series start. He also needs to pitch, pitch deep into this game. Uh, Valdez only got six outs yesterday, so he didn't go deep at all either. Both teams go to their bullpen early. We're going to need to see a lot of innings from Urquidy as well um, if the... Astros don't want to tax their bullpen, which they don't. Um, Odorizzi came in yesterday, so he's not going to be able for long relief. A.J. Minter, unavailable for today, 99% sure. After throwing, like I said, a career-high 43 pitches, um, Jackson, Luke Jackson, and Matzik uh, worked more than an inning yesterday, so we'll see if they get called upon. More than likely not. 
It's going to look like it's Chris Martin and Jesse Chavez to be getting the call from the pen today. So keep an eye out on that. Kendall Graveman and Ryan Presley for the Astros uh, will likely enter the game at some point today as they are the best relievers coming out of the Astros bullpen. Being down one nothing, they they're going to get the call, I'm sure, today. Keep an eye out on that. Also, teams who have scored the first run this postseason have won 25 of 32 games. First one to score, 25 wins out of the 32 games. So that's the recap for the World Series in 2020. Let's cover uh, these stories that I saw in the news center. Don't make any fucking sense. Washington football team reportedly won't release any information in their investigation. Roger Goodell reiterates league's decision not to make public the results of the investigation into the Washington football team. Um, there were lewd pictures of cheerleaders, um, work environment stuff. I think it was sexual in nature. Uh, they said the uh, the autonomy of or the anonymity of people who cooperated in the investigation was too high a priority to allow the league to do so. What the fuck does that mean? So they're going to do this whole investigation about sexual misconduct, workplace environment, all this bullshit, right? But they're not going to release it. But they'll air out John Gruden's emails about saying the F word and the G word and the R word, um, but not a toxic work environment and culture with possible sexual assault occurred, sexual misconduct, but we're just going to let out emails. Why are we, how do you pick and choose that? That's fucking weird, don't you think? Something to think about. Oh, speaking of sexual misconduct, NFL still gathering info on Deshaun Watson. Goodell said the NFL has to do enough has to does not have enough info about the 22 civil lawsuits against him. Do not have enough info to place him on commissioner's exempt list. He's still getting looked at by teams. What the fuck is going on, dude? So you could write shitty emails and you're gone later. Racist, homophobic, whatever you call it, label him, whatever you want. You got 22 women who said that he exposed himself. Same line, same story. Cooperated through all the same women, and you don't have enough information. And this guy's still getting looked at by teams. I don't understand that. Why is this freaking animal piece of shit getting looked at by teams? Who's allowing that? I does anybody understand why that is different from any other cases that has been going on? I, I don't get it. I understand innocent until proven guilty, right? Then why wasn't Trevor Bauer? Why is why is he not allowed to pitch? Remember that Trevor Bauer had this had a very similar kind of thing. Well, he had a consensual sexual encounter. Consensual. It was noted. But Deshaun Watson exposes himself, 22 different women, and he still gets to try and find a job. Hmm. That's weird. Bizarre. Fucking weird. Fucking weird. Um, anywho, that's going to do it, guys. Quick 15-minute show. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe I'll be back here on the couch next time. Maybe I'll be back at the desk behind the bookshelf. Who knows? It's fucking Halloween, baby. I got Hoobie Halloween playing, and then I got to get back to work. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Thanks for watching. World Series Game 2 tonight. Can't wait. Anybody got any leans, any picks? Um, I think it's hard not to take the Astros at home again, right? Let's see what the, the line is at real quick. We got Astros at minus 125, Braves plus 105. Hmm, interesting. I don't know if um, I want to pick a side. I might look at players. So I was looking at player props. Let's look at, not home runs, we're looking at hits, overs, and unders. Um, Where is it? Jordan Alvarez, total bases. Let's see, total bases for Jordan Alvarez. I was looking at some information earlier, and it looked like he rakes. 
um, in this situation. Yeah, over one and a half total bases, plus 125. I'm going to play that today uh, against a lefty. I think Joran Alvarez, I was looking at numbers earlier. I think he just mashes. So I'm going to play that today and then just hope for a great game. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you soon. Sheffield Shuffler, lost in the shuffle.